Did you know the number one tool people struggle with in their leather carving is the swivel knife? Maybe you share some of the same struggles. You might have a knife that drags through the leather or your curved lines look a little choppy and broken up. Maybe you're having trouble getting your lines to fade out and look nice and smooth. In this video, I'm going to show you some practical, simple tips that work even with your beginner knife that you already have. Let's get over and get started. Let's look at the first problem of that knife dragging when you're pulling it through the leather. It might feel like it's bouncing or chattery. That's going to either be because of your knife blade itself or the leather. I'm going to talk about both of those. Number one, this knife blade. Now this is a beginner's knife and when these knives are made, they have a sharpened on a round wheel and it's going to put little grooves in that blade going this direction. The problem with that is we run our knife sideways, not this way. So that's what's dragging on your blade there. And we're going to fix that just with a piece of sandpaper here. This is a 400 grit piece of sandpaper, or you can do it with a sharpening stone or anything. But I'm going to hold my, the angle of my blade so you can see the angle on the end of that blade. I want the bottom of that angle flat with my table here. And I'm not going to drag this knife this way. I'm actually going to go sideways with it. So we're going to simply Run that blade sideways on there, keeping that blade nice and flat with that angle there, right? I'm going to flip that over and do the other side of that as well. Okay. Now we've run those lines out of there, but we need to polish that blade up. So now to polish that, we're going to get Jewelers Rouge or this polishing compound here. And with a scrap of leather, you can use a scrap of leather, you can use even a piece of cardboard, but I'm going to take this compound and simply rub it on that leather. Now I have my strop prepared, my fancy strop board here, which is just a scrap of leather. Now looking at that angle of your blade again, let's hold that angle flat and I'm going to simply run this across that strop. I did it three times on that side, so I'm going to flip that blade over and we're going to do it three times on this side. Now the magic's not in the number three, the magic's in the fact that we're doing it even on both sides, so we're keeping that blade nice and polished on both sides. A couple more times on each side. Now we have a blade that's polished and ready to go. We'll keep that strop handy. If that blade gets to dragging more, we can simply polish that up. You shouldn't have to get your sandpaper very often, but the strop you might have to do just to keep that polished and running smooth. Now a high, higher dollar knife, your Berry Kings and Leather Wranglers and such, you're probably not going to take those to your sandpaper. Again, those started out a little bit more polished. You'll just need to maintain those with a strop. But now we have a beginner knife ready to go. Now any of the knives we sell out of the shop, they're just these plain beginner knives here as well, but they've already been prepped before you get them. So if you buy a knife from us, that's already honed up and ready to go. I've tested that knife myself. And we'll link all this stuff up in the description to make it easy for you if you're missing any of this stuff or want to get any of that. The next thing is our leather. What type of leather are we using and how do we prepare that leather? So the, by far the number one best leather for tooling is Herman Oak leather. Now that's a veg tan leather, but Herman Oak is the tannery and that's how that leather is prepared and it's going to carve like butter if we prepare it right. So if you haven't tooled on Herman Oak before, I highly recommend you try that. Even if it's a practice scrap, we have a scrap bundle. We'll, put, we'll link that in the description too if you want to give this Herman Oak a try. But you have to make sure you're comparing apples to apples and not looking at your carving on import veg tan leather and trying to compare that to the results that somebody's getting on Herman Oak. So now when I prepare this, I'm going to wet it down. Now when I prepare this, I'm just going to wet it down. Now this is just regular water here. How much water do we put on? Boy, I wish I could tell you in measurements how much to put on, but it doesn't work that way. There's so many factors into it. But it's kind of a watch and by look and feel thing. So I'm looking to see just how quick that's absorbing. So that water's taking a minute to absorb now. 
Now I know that's getting cased up pretty good. We're just, the idea is that we're getting moisture down into that leather, but I don't want it too wet so it's mushy and that can have your, your knife dragging as well. So too dry or too wet could be two causes of that leather uh, making your knife drag a little bit. But now that we have that kind of that nice medium case and a polished blade, that knife should just slide right through like butter there. Now what if we have a polished blade, our good leather cased up, but we still have trouble with our curved lines and they're looking choppy and jaggedy and not smooth and consistent like we like them. How are we going to fix that and what in the world is happening? So one of the big things that I see is people trying to make cuts a little bit at a time, which is going to get that choppy look to it. Or even if we make a cut, a start of a smooth cut, and then we come back in and make another cut and we come back to it to get that around there. It's looking boxy and choppy and broke up. To get those smooth cuts, let's look at a couple things. Number one, don't be so rigid with your, with your hand and with your leather. Don't be afraid to turn that. Now we're gonna get turned from three different things here. I'm gonna get turned from my hand itself. I can move my whole arm around here. I can get turned from this knife, right? That's why it's a swivel knife is because it swivels here. So we got to remember to rotate and get some curve from that blade itself, twisting our barrel here. The last thing that we're going to get curved from is our leather. It's okay to move that leather and shift your project a little bit. So if I want to make one of these curved lines here from right to left, I can shift my leather. I'll shift my arm and my hand over here. My blades rotated. Once I put that in there, I'm going to rotate my hand, my blade, and that leather. Pull that nice smooth cut around there. So remember, three points of turn happen in here. My arm, my swivel in my blade, and that leather. So let's do one the other way. My blade, my arm, and that leather. Any one of those can work. All three of them together, you get a really nice cut. Now, what if we have a cut that goes all the way around and we can't make it around all the way? Here's your other really practical tip. If I have to have a continuous cut around here, and I start one cut around, but I need that to continue. I need to reshift everything. When I go back into this cut, rather than putting my blade right here at the end of that cut and starting it again, that's what's causing those jumps in there. I'm gonna back that knife up into my cut a little ways. I'm not pushing down as I cut. I'm going to just simply follow that trajectory around there, follow the path of that curve. And then as I get down towards the end where I want that cut to come, now I can start pushing down and continuing my cut. We have no jumps and skips in that that way. And we can do that with a full circle down here. We can start it. Now I stop, shift. Let's come back into that cut, follow that trajectory around, and keep things coming. So we've brought that all the way around without the jumps and skips in there. The last big issue I see people have with these knives is not being able to fade that cut out. Now, what do I mean when I talk about fade? We're talking about a cut that starts really deep here and it just fades off and gradually goes away. And that's what's going to add some of that, that flow and smoothness and really just bring that professional element to your tooling. Now, we can talk in other videos about where to fade and when to fade. Basically, get in the habit of always fading those cuts and that's going to help you. You can always go deeper with your bevels but you can't back up and fade something out 
with a bevel if you've already cut a line all the way, right? If you're just starting out, if you had a problem with your lines look a little more like this and a little less like that, we can fix that. So the other common line I see is one like this. That's really hard to fade out as well. The big thing about fading those cuts is let's start deep with that cut. So I'm going to put pressure down on my knife and actually push that down. Now your, your down pressure is coming from this top finger here, right? So I'm going to put that down pressure in there. Now as I pull that cut, I have room to fade off. If I start really shallow like this cut here, I can't fade off any because we're already really light. So how deep do you start that cut? You can look at the thickness of your leather and go a portion of that. Sometimes that's, I think that's really overwhelming and hard to measure. Unless you're tooling on really thin leather, like this is like a three, four ounce here, then we'd have to worry about tooling and cutting through that. But on most of your leather, five, six ounce, this is an eight, nine here, that, that kind of average weight, use this as your your little reference tool to get started with. But that angle on your blade where that is actually sharpened down, when I push that into my leather, I'm pushing almost as deep as the angle on that blade there to get started with. And it doesn't have to be exact, but that's gonna get you enough depth that you have room to fade that out. The last big issue I see with people fading their cuts out is they go to end a cut and they try ending it with their wrist. So they make a cut like this and they end it like that. The problem when I end a cut with my wrist like this is I'm, one, I'm drastically changing the angle of that blade, right? I want that blade tipped up, but just enough to get that end point out of the leather so it's not catching. If I tip that so far like this to end a cut, now I'm pushing that through my cut. So you might get cuts that have this little point, that little arrow down at the end. You ever had a cut that looks like that at the bottom? Almost guarantee that you're tipping your knife forward like that. So really watch to keep that angle of that blade steady and starting that cut deep. Now to fade off, I'm just gonna lighten my pressure with this finger as I pull that cut to where it, it gradually goes from the depth we started out to nothing. See this cut starts deep, fades all the way out to nothing there. If you want some extra practice and really want to dial this tool in, I'm going to link up a free practice guide in the description here and it's going to give you this base pattern. Now it's larger with a lot more room to work, but I want to give you the idea of it so you know how to use it. Again, it's a free download, print it off, transfer that to your leather, and when you do it, you'll cut in this pattern to start with just following the lines that's given you. Then you're gonna come back and start stacking in more cuts along those lines. But the big thing with this is it forces you to work your knife in both directions and really build the skills it takes to become proficient with this tool. It's gonna to set you up for all of your patterns. Hey, for those of you still watching, I can tell you're serious about wanting to improve, so I wanna personally invite you to the Leather Life Classroom. It's an online community of people just like you, pushing and working together to learn and grow their craft. We'll put a link down in the description so you can get all the information, but I can't wait to see you in the Leather Life Classroom.